So why is hot water cloudy, and what exactly do I mean by that? Gosh, I really need a shower. Well, first of all, I don't mean dirty water. If your water is contaminated and is gray because of that, then you should probably contact your public water services. But you see, I'm only talking about uh, cloudy water that comes from the hot tap, uh, right as you draw it, and it only lasts for about 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, so it has nothing to do with any sort of pollutant in the water. When I first saw this, I was simply going to conclude that uh, by pouring the water, I was making the water turbulent and introducing air into it like that. That's what the bubbles were. But that doesn't explain why it only happens with hot water. In this video I recorded, you have the cold water on the left and the hot water on the right. Notice how the cold water stays mostly clear, but the hot stays cloudy for quite a while. You can see here that the cloudiness comes from the tiny bubbles, giving the water a gray color. Now if you were just interested in the answer, or maybe some of the slow motion footage, uh, well then that's all I have, uh, so thank you for watching. However, if you're interested in the science behind it, I'm going to go slightly in depth into it right now. First, let me introduce you to this old guy, uh, who was born before the French and the American Revolutions. His name is William Henry, and he was an English chemist. He worked mostly on gases, and was the first to really do some in-depth studies about how gases are dissolved into liquids in function of both temperature and pressure. Uh, his work is now summed up as Henry's Law. This law states that the amount of dissolved gas in a liquid is proportional to the pressure above the liquid. The equation also changes in function of temperature. Hey, 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 don't judge me. Wikipedia is a very valid source and I can use it. Now that we know what we're working with, let's look at our specific example by starting with the differences between hot and cold water in a domestic environment. Both waters come from the main power supply of the city. For me, this water corresponds to 15 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius, at three bars of pressure. However, we are going to take this pressure and put it into kilopascals, which should be about 300 kilopascals. Next, my water heater is going to take this water and raise its temperature, as it is intended, to about 60 degrees Celsius and it's also going to be raising the pressure to around 600 kilopascals. This water then comes out of my faucet. Uh, so now comes the science. So here we have a very handy chart which represents the solubility of air in water in function of pressure and temperature. Very useful. Uh, so first of all, let's try to understand what this is showing us. So down here we have the temperature, so pretty straightforward. Here we have 10 degrees, here we have 100 degrees. Here we have air solubility, uh, which is essentially saying for every volume of water, there is this much air in it. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about the unit though, since we are mostly going to be looking at the proportion between two values. And finally down here, we have the representation, well we have the yeah, the representation of what each of these lines mean. So for this blue line here, it is representing the curve if there is no pressure at all, if it's at zero, which would be in space pretty much. Um, our atmospheric pressure is around 100 kilopascals, which is going to be found a little bit right here, since the orange line is at 138. And the highest pressure we're going to be working with is around 600 which should be found somewhere here between 550 and 690. So now that we know how the chart works, let's, uh, let's apply it to our needs. The cold water coming from our city is around 300 kilopascals, uh, which is going to be pretty much this gray line, which is at 280. So we're going to follow the gray, the gray line just to make it easier. Uh, let's see. And it is at 15 degrees, which is going to be roughly here. Up. Ah, oh, goodness. Roughly right there. And now that we have this, 
we can see that it corresponds to about 0 0.75, uh, no, 0 0.075. So this value is about 0 0.075. And that is our air solubility at 15 degrees. Now, our water heater takes this water and it brings it to 60 degrees, which is going to be all the way over here. And it also brings it up to 600 kilopascals, brings us to around here. So we can see that we now actually have more room in our liquid because now our liquid can store this much gas, but the amount of gas stays the same because our water heater is not introducing more gas. Uh, so it takes it up to here, and now uh, we are in the situation where we are asking our water heater for water and for it to come out of the faucet. And it is going to go from 600, we're going to do a straight line down, all the way to about 100 kilopascals. And we end up at this spot. And now if we track it all the way to the other side, we can see that we are at 0.02. So we have our current liquid, which has 0 0.075 in terms of air solubility. And we are putting it in an environment where the water can only accept 0 0.02 in terms of air solubility. That's, uh, this is almost three times higher than this number. Meaning that about, let's say, about 66% of the gas that was currently dissolved in our water is going to immediately come out, which is where all those bubbles come from. So what am I gonna do now that I know this information? What can you do now that you know this information? Well, probably not much. Um, it's not a very useful piece of information unless you're really into plumbing and piping, or maybe you're a chemical engineer, in which case, this information is very important, but the average person is not that. So why did I make this video and why did you watch it, assuming you're not one of those things that I said? Well, that is the beauty of learning and satisfying our own curiosity, is that it doesn't necessarily always have to have a purpose. It can just be to better understand our world and to make us more intelligent human beings. If you're still watching, then go check your water faucets. Check the cold water, check the hot water. Do you see bubbles? Do you not see bubbles? What kind of deductions can you make from this? Thank you for watching. My name is Julian, and I would like you to stay curious. Goodbye.